weather, a crystal and blue sky in Chicago. Cubs baseball is on the air. The Pittsburgh Pirates in town for a four-game series and a rain makeup doubleheader this afternoon. Game one featuring Jason Bure of the Cubs against Jimmy Anderson for the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Cubs enter play ten and a half games out of first. The Pirates are five games behind the front-running Cincinnati Reds. Lloyd McClendon's ball club, like the Cubs, has struggled to score, and that's a trend Jason Bure hopes continues today. Chad Hermanson will lead off in center field, followed by Jack Wilson at short. Cup killer Brian Giles hits third in left. Aramis Ramirez finally has hit his first home run of the season. He's hitting fourth. Rob McCoviak, a local product, is in right. Jason Kendall behind the plate, bat sixth. Kevin Young hitting a buck 87, hit seven. Pokey Reese dropped from second to eighth in the batting order, is at second base. And Anderson, of course, will pitch in bat night against Cub right-hander Jason Bure, who's really had two great outings this year for the Cubs, Dave Otto. One saw him beat the Pittsburgh Pirates. The other saw him take a tough loss against the Cardinals in St. Louis. And the 30-year-old looking to snap a personal five-game losing streak. But, Chip, you're right. That last outing against the Cardinals, that is the Jason Bray of last year when he had that ERA of 4.31. He won six-plus innings in that ball game against the Cardinals and gave up three earned runs in a losing effort. But I like the way he threw his breaking ball last time to go along with that Bosch. And look at the Cub defensive lineup in game one of the doubleheader. Alou, Patterson, and Sosa are in the outfield. Fred McGriff, Bobby Hill, Mark Bellhorn at short. Bill Miller at third base, and Robert Machado is behind the plate. Jason Bure's lost his last five decisions. He's given up 26 earned runs in 28 innings and two-thirds. Wind should favor the pitchers to a certain degree. It's blowing very gently out of the east at nine miles per hour. And it's a relatively comfortable 51 degrees, although once the sun dips below the horizon, it's going to get a whole lot colder here in Chicago. But many feel this is going to be the last real cold day that the Cubs will face. And that's a good thing here at Wrigley Field. Chad Hermanson in the box. He's ready to go, and we're underway. A strike, says Brian Onora. Hermanson is in his eighth game with the Pirates as the leadoff man. He's seven for his last 25. He's knocked in four runs but has only scored one time despite that pretty good start. Dave, this is a man that many felt the Pirates would be able to build their entire organization around. He's still a very young player, but just has not been the dominant offensive or defensive force they thought they were getting when they signed him. Well, when he came up, or when he was in AAA for two years in AAA, he had 60 home runs in those two years, Chip, and just has not been able to do it at the big league level yet. Ray missed inside, ball one to Hermanson. What had them scared very much was he was hitting 196 at AAA. And uh, he's out of options. He's got to make this team and stick with this team. Otherwise, if they expose him, someone else might take a chance with a very young player. And he's aboard with a leadoff single here in the top of the Pirate first. T Pittsburgh team that's really struggled to have anybody consistently perform in that number one holding batting. Well, Adrian Brown, who had some starts, Leading off, really struggle and really searching. In fact, with Jack Wilson here batting second, Pokey Reese started the year off hitting in that two slot. Now he has moved down. He's looking for some offense at the top to set the table for guys like Giles and Ramirez, who's back in the lineup. Wilson hitting a buck 91. No homers and 10 driven in the Pittsburgh shortstop. And he shows bunt and pops it out of play. You will see very similar offensive styles, at least you figure, to see that if you believe the numbers statistically in the National League. Pittsburgh dead last in batting average as a team at 225. The Cubs 15th out of 16 teams at 231. The Pirates average 3.2 runs a game. The Cubs average 3.6 runs per game. The Pirates dead last in home runs. They've hit 22 of them as a team. The Cubs only 11th with 38 home runs and 14 in 20 games in Chicago. So offensively, these two teams are really, really fighting it in the first two months of the 2002 season. And certainly them losing Aramis Ramirez, who went on the 15-day DL after spraining his ankle. Certainly missed to him in that lineup. Nothing in one to Wilson. Again, he bunts. It's popped up. Can anybody catch up? No. Diving try by Miller. And it's nothing in two to Jack Wilson, a former St. Louis Cardinal farmhand. Just four hits in his last 50 at-bats. 
but uh, Wilson has been very impressive defensively for the Pirates, and who will forget that double play they turned against the Cubs up in Pittsburgh's PNC Park. Reese to Wilson to Young to end the game earlier in a series this year. One of the best double plays you'll ever see. Off the bat of Alex Gonzalez, game ender. Hermanson, a real good lead at first. No balls, two strikes. And that's toward the hole. Bellhorn stumbles, knocks it down, has no play. Bellhorn spun his wheels, and Wilson has an infield hit and an inauspicious start for Beret. Two men on, nobody out for Brian Giles. Well, Bellhorn playing at double play depth, not able to make the play. We have seen, particularly at Miller Park, and that was, the guy's losing their feet at Miller Park. Condition's pretty tough. That's a play that Bellhorn normally makes over at shortstop. So now Beret's got to really batten down the hatches. Here's Giles, seven homers, 16 batted in. He's hitting 258. And there's a double play ball. Four to six to three. No, they call him safe. Giles beat it out. Hustling down the line was Giles. Slow developing play up the middle. Hill and Bellhorn can't convert the double play. And Giles keeps the frame alive. First and third with one out. Well, it is slow developing. And Bobby Hill, you know, getting used to playing here at Wrigley Field. This infield is super slow. And on that type of ball hit, he's going to charge it a little bit. Although it does look like here, pretty close play over at first base. But Chip, with this slow infield, you have to be really aggressive fielding and charge the baseball in order to get two. Here's Aramis Ramirez. Dave, you're right. You mentioned he was on the DL with an injured ankle. And uh, he has not regained his stroke yet. Five for his last 30 since coming back on May 4th from that ankle problem. And he hit a home run on Sunday. That was his first in 31 games. And here's the man that belted 34 home runs last year for the Pirates. That's one big reason why they are struggling. His Power numbers have taken a serious, serious beating. Well, last year, Ramirez and Giles both over 30 home runs. That was the first time that Pirates team has done that since Bobby Bonilla and Barry Bonds. One ball, one strike to Aramis Ramirez. Cubs would look for a double play ball off of his bat. But he doesn't hit it on the ground too often. Only two double play balls and 76 at bats for the Pittsburgh team. Two singles to lead the game off by Hermanson and Wilson. Giles hit a ground ball that the Cubs couldn't turn into a twin killing. Now Ramirez looks for his 10th RBI and an early lead for Pittsburgh here in the first. Ball two, strike one to Ramirez. Move to the ball club, much different today than it was heading into Sunday's series finale against Milwaukee. I think that Everyone feels a huge sigh of relief now. You can get back to business and hopefully run off a string of good, solid baseball. The Cubs have to start doing it here at home, for there are not many home games in the next three weeks. 2-1. Ah, back toward us. Two balls, two strikes. You know, there's so many good things that happen in that ball game against Milwaukee. Sammy Sosa making a great catch in right field to finish the Brewers off in that ninth inning. Bill Miller with the man on third in extra innings, making a great over-the-shoulder catch over at third base. Joe Borowski, great relief work. That was a game that really the Brewers should have won, but the Cubs hung in there and battled their talent. Fred McGriff, two-run home run. Might have been the greatest catch I've ever seen since I've been with the Cubs, the play that Sammy Sosa made. I mean, how many times have you seen a guy fall down on a potential game-winning or game-ending play, then get back up and on a dead run, still recover to make the catch. I mean, he was down on both knees. And if that game had not gone the Cubs' way, oh boy, you talk about depressing. But what a play and what a comeback by the Cubs. Hit and run is on, and Ramirez stays alive. So everybody's excited, everybody's fired up. Again, they've got to be. Cubs only have seven home games until middle of June when the White Sox come here to play on the 14th, 15th, and 16th. Well, you 
saw Giles in motion there. I like that because I like the Cubs' chances. Ramirez, a big strikeout victim. Strike him out, throw him out. 2-2 two -two pitch. On the way, runner holds, and the pitch line to left. Alou makes the grab. Tagging at third is Hermanson. The throw to the plate is a little bit late. And no advance by Giles. Ramirez drives home his 10th run of the year. And Pittsburgh grabs a one to nothing lead. Great throw by Alou, but the ball just hit too deeply to have a chance to get a speedy base runner at home. Question, and the Cubs catch a break there because Brian Giles from first base does not tag up, and with Moises Alou trying to get that out at home, misses the cutoff, man. And now at least Jason Bray gets to pitch with the man on first as opposed to someone in scoring position. Here's Rob Bakoviak, local product. Has feasted against the Cubs, if memory serves. He's knocked in 14 runs. Four home runs, but a 232 batting average. Makoviak, four for 13 with a home run and three knocked in in the head-to-head -head series. strikes Giles runs and the pitch fouled away by Makoviak and the count evens at one and one well Rios on the disabled list received the bulk of the playing time in right field but still has lingering effects from the knee injury he sustained last year back on the disabled list and Makoviak is getting a chance to play every day in right field One to nothing lead. One ball, one strike to Makoviak. And again to first. Pirates jumped out of the gates in great fashion, much to the surprise of a lot of people around Major League Baseball. And really, they've done it with outstanding pitching. That trade they made with the White Sox really has been to the Pirates' great benefit so far. Nothing against Todd Ritchie, but it added depth and it added a whole lot of quality to an injury riddled Pirates staff. Now if they can get some offense going, they figure to at least make a run of it in the Central. Here it is, middle of May. And despite being two games under 500, Dave, the Pirates are only five games out of first place. And coming off a year in which they lost 100 games because they lost three-fifths of their starting rotation at the beginning of last year. Two balls, one strike. Ball three. You don't want to face Jason Kendall with men on, and that's going to be the fate of Bure if he misfires again. Second season at the helm for former Cub Lloyd McClendon, the Pirate manager. He said uh, when we first saw Pittsburgh, his demeanor has changed dramatically. It's not as intense. It feels like his ball club has been playing much more relaxed. Ball four. Two are on with two out. Here's Kendall, another struggling pirate hitter. But a man who is very, very dangerous. Kendall, one for 15 this year against the Cub pitching staff, but lifetime hitting 282. Can't figure out why this guy's struggling so mightily offensively. Certainly the gigantic dimensions in left and left center field at his home park have something to do with it. He's had some injury problems, too, but he's a much better player than he's shown. Strike over the outside corner. Nothing in one. Well, Kendall battled that thumb injury last year, had off-season surgery. And so you would expect him, when all is said and done this year, to have better numbers than he's put up so far, because last year really basically hit him with one hand. Could have gone on the DL or opted for surgery during the season last year. Instead, he tried to play through the pain and did not have a particularly good season by his very high standards. This was one of the best catchers in the National League. Struggled through 
a 266 year with 10 homers and 53 batted in and trying to justify that very big contract in a very blue collar town well that six year 60 million contract extension that he signed a couple years ago this is his first year in that contract one ball one strike off his thumbs and over first down the right field line. That's trouble. Around second is Giles. He'll score. Makoviak, they're going to wave him. Sammy picks it up a little late under the grate. And Jason Kendall with two outs. Doubles home a pair. And the Pirates lead it by three here in the first inning. That's why you don't want to walk people in front of Jason Kendall. No, right now, Jason trying to establish that breaking ball. He had a good one last time against the St. Louis Cardinals. However, by trying to throw so many breaking balls, you never find that command of your fastball. And in this first inning, with that wind blowing straight in, boy, you've got to find number one. Have to find your fastball. So three for the Pirates, and they're still batting with Kevin Young, another struggling offensive player. You could say that practically about every member of their team. Young at 187 with three home runs. And 10 driven in. Young closing in on 500 major league hits. He has 895 of them. Not bad for a man that was released twice. Once by the Royals and once by these Pittsburgh Pirates. Nothing in one to Young. There's a high looping fly ball to right. Sosa gallops in, and he'll make the catch to retire the side. Pittsburgh scores three times on three hits. They leave Jason Kendall stranded. Here come the Cubs trailing in the first. If there's lots of places that you would like to see. Fly Southwest Airlines, because friends fly free. For romance. Give it a spin. Fly so you can dance. Fly so you can cry. Fly. Because it's America. And if you fly Southwest Airlines, your friend fly free. Announcing friends fly free from Southwest Airlines. Simply purchase a special discounted fare starting at $59 and a friend comes along for free. You are now free to move about the country. start the Pirates get three runs before Jimmy Anderson throws a pitch in competition but this is the Cub lineup he will face in game one of this afternoon's double dip Corey Patterson Bill Miller and Sammy Sosa comprise the one two and three hitters Fred McGriff Moise Salu and Robert Machado fourth through sixth Bobby Hill at second Mark Bellhorn the shortstop and of course Jason Bure will pitch at hit night against a guy that's been awfully tough on the Cubs Dave and I would imagine the hitters when they see a comfortable 0 for 4 figure how in the world does Anderson do it boy you got that right he's just a lefty that throws about 84 85 miles an hour but the thing that makes him difficult to hit sometimes is that deception in his delivery Anderson backs out of the way sometimes a long layoff between the top and bottom of the first can cause some first inning difficulty for the second pitcher in a game and let's see if Patterson can be the igniter surprisingly Corey has done a great job in his first full season as a starter against left-handed pitching Patterson hitting 341 
against Southpaws this year. Oh, and with that, his approach against left-handed pitching to try and drive the ball to left field. And every once in a while, lefties will come in on him, and he'll get jammed every once in a while. Hot shot toward Pokey Reese. And boy, they're glad to have him in a pirate uniform, Dave. He really has transformed this Pittsburgh defensive lineup, hasn't he? No question. At second base, only one error in the year. As you take a look at the Corona defense, the Pirates in the outfield, Giles Hermanson and McCovey Atkin, right? Ramirez, Wilson, Reese, and Young in the infield. Kendall behind the plate. And Jimmy Anderson, 26-year-old, on the mound for the Pirates. One up, one down for Bill Miller. This is Bill's 10th game back from the disabled list after the knee surgery from spring training. And Bill with a couple of home runs and six driven in. And there's a high fly ball hit deep down the left field line, but I believe he's pulled it too far. He has. And Bill into a quick two strike hole. We'd like to welcome our affiliate Mediacom Broadband and their viewers in Iowa City, Iowa to a very chilly Wrigley Field. The Pirates have not been very nice house guests or house guests. They've scored three times here in the first inning. Well, it's chilly, but I'll tell you what, this is the most comfortable I've been sitting up in this booth. All spring. Man, it's been raw. Two strikes to Miller. Mac was reading the paper the other day and I believe on the weather page they said that since 1935 this has been the coldest May in the history of Chicago. Pretty remarkable. It's great being a part of history, isn't it, Dave? Sure. Two balls, two strikes. <laughs> Anderson wants a new baseball, and, and he will get it. You mentioned in our open the key to this guy, make him throw you some strikes. He's walked 22 men in 47 innings, only has struck out 17. But the number that jumps out at you is eight home runs allowed. Well, and coming off last year in 200 innings pitch, walked 83 guys. And not an overpowering fastball. However, it moves. That he has that tailing fastball to go along with that cutter. Driven down the right field line. That ball might stay fair, and it won't. Seems like every ball the opposition hits down that line and finds the chalk. Every ball the Cubs hit won't stay in play. It all comes out in the wash, Chip. The worm is turning. Well, I, I said to some of the guys today, first uh, the 3-2 to Miller. Hot shot toward Ramirez at third. Right in his tracks. That throw two out. Said it's kind of nice. You can come to the ballpark and nobody has to say, all right, let's turn it around. Everybody can say, hey, let's keep it going. And that's a, a subtle little saying, but boy, it sure means a lot to the psyche. Yeah, and, and that's what's so frustrating about you coming off a big win on Sunday against the Brewers, and all of a sudden you're in that three zip hole here in the first inning. Two quick outs for Sammy Sosa. How has this Cub offense go, gone? Sammy Sosa's last RBI was seven days ago. Not home run, RBI. He still has 24 of them. And uh, Bonds and Berkman have tied him with 15 home runs. And this is one of our featured subjects of the Open. He's done a real good job against left-handed pitching. Hitting 350 against them, and I think it's only natural for Sammy the superstar obviously of the team to all of a sudden put all the weight of the of the team on your shoulders and when you do do that you start swinging the pitches out of the zone trying to make something happen 1-1 one, one pitch a little bit low two balls and a strike the Cubs in 20 games at home have hit 14 home runs as a team in this ballpark the drive to center field. Hermanson's going to have room, however. And the side is retired. Three up, three down in the bottom half of the first. And after one, the Pittsburgh Pirates lead by three. Y'all ready for this? Ready 
for something new? The excitement? The value? It's Toyota's nationwide summer event featuring our stylish cars. And now get financing as low as 1.9% on the roomy Sienna minivan. That one nine rate will save you a whole lot in financing or choose $1,000 cash back. Either way, you're saving on this amazing van that received the government's prestigious five-star safety rating. Y'all ready for this? Get the Toyota you've been wanting now. We're ready. Are you? When you run, when you run, when you run, run out to White Hen. Right now, get a gallon of White Hen skim milk for just $1.99. Now, for a limited time, at your participating White Hen. When you run, when you run, Get a gallon of skim milk for just a dollar ninety-nine. Oh come on, look at this guy. It's got to be over a hundred degrees out there. You have any idea what that does to an engine? Need a motor oil for hot temperatures? We developed one. Penn's Oil Synthetic Resist Spinning to protect engines in hot summer conditions. Penn's Oil. We're driving protection. Get ready for summer with Penn's Oil Synthetic. Now at Jiffy Lube, the well-oiled machine. Remember the thrill of collecting baseball cards? It's back with a vengeance. Introducing eTops.com. This week, get these limited edition one-of-a-kind sports cards. Track their value on your own online portfolio. Look how previous cards have gone up. Get to eTops.com today. Whatever concerns you, inspires you, enchants you, or thrills you, there's a channel for you on AT&T Broadband. AT&T Broadband, where there's something for everyone. Let's look at one of our Geico moments, Sammy Sosa from his autobiography. And boy, that first bonus check. As a youngster growing up in the Dominican Republic, meant a lot to Sosa and his family. Uh, Pokey Reese lines out to Sosa for up number one. It's an amazing story of Sammy, and we talked about it so much in that 1998 season. Really, it was not just an American dream come true, but any person's dream come true. A young man that sold oranges and shined shoes, now making 14 or 15 million dollars, and is one of the most acclaimed players in any sport in the United States. Well, I remember playing against him when he first came up with the Chicago White Sox, or actually faced him in AAA, and you knew that he was going to be some kind of special. Just the way he went, went about his business. And also, you know, you, you have a young guy, 19 years old at the time, and he's hitting balls to right field, just bullets. And at that time, obviously skinnier than he is now. It's a man that stole 30 bases, hit 30 home runs was very much a, an untamed or an unbroken colt. Used to call him Lobo, which means wild and raw in Spanish. Lobo? Lobo. I thought it had been wolf. And then, of course, the band Los Lobos. Wouldn't that be the wolves, or does that mean the wild and whatever? I, I thought you knew French. I, <laughs> They speak five different languages. I'm a polyglot. <laughs> speak none of them right. No balls, two strikes to Anderson. Fire pitcher way outside. One and two, your count. Joe Corneo begs to differ, but uh, I think Lobo means wolf. Oh, they're slang, huh? Oh, okay. okay. And in keeping with our, our animal and Spanish phrases, Corneo means rabbit. The 2-2. Two -two. Little ground ball hit toward Bobby Hill at second. And he makes the play. Two up and two down. Let's see uh, handle the promo in Ingles. Okay, Cubs fan. How am I doing so far? Very, very well. Plenty of good seats still available for Cubs games <laughs> throughout the 2002 season. For tickets, call 1-800-THE-CUBS. Visit the Wrigley Field box office, any Chicagoland Sears or Sears hardware store, or... Go to Cubs.com, the ultimate baseball website. Listen to game day audio and watch highlights direct and more exclusively at Cubs.com. Or in Spanish, Cochoros.com. Here's Hermanson. He singled and scored the first.
Pittsburgh run in the first inning. Foul back. Hermanson, you got to remember, he's only 24 years old. Made a little bit of an adjustment swinging the bat in spring training. He's really getting tied up on fastballs inside. And then working with Dave Clark, the hitting coach for the Pirates, has moved off the plate a little bit. Because we saw him last year at the end of the year, and he was right on top of that plate. One ball, two strikes from Beret. First round selection in the 95 June draft for the Pirates. Tenth overall pick. In those first two years in AAA, lights out. 60 home runs. Back in 98 and 99. Well, and they figured with Giles, with Ramirez, with Hermanson, Jack Wilson, Pokey Reese, Chris Benson coming back. They'd have a real nice, solid core of young players. And down goes Hermanson. That'll retire the side. Beret. Gets a one, two, three in the second. We'll see if the heart of the Cub order can scratch across their first run of a three nothing Pirate game. Well, hello. Oh, great. A talking gecko. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. can happen anytime. That's why Geico's here 24 hours a day, every day. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We come from all over the world. Because we have doubts. Fears. There are times when we need to confront them. And then there are times when we realize Got better things to do. Ryan Miller owns a Hyundai Sonata. We did a ton of research on the internet. Things that you normally would pay extra for came standard. An exceptional list of standard features and room for five. Very stylish looking, very roomy on the inside. The Sonata also comes with the freedom of America's best warranty. We just felt for our money, the Sonata was the best value. The Hyundai Sonata at just $16,494. It's a lot more car. The Hyundai Sonata at $16,494. Your test drive is waiting. It's going to be a slugfest at Fenway. Conerco in the White Sox. Nomar in the Red Sox. White Sox, Red Sox. Tomorrow at 5.30 on Fox Sports Net. It's the show that's changing the face of sports television forever. The best sports show, period, with hosts Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of ex-jocks. It's the only show that gives you sports comedy commentary, scores and highlights. The best sports show, period, tonight at 10 on Fox Sports Net. A quick strike to Fred McGriff as we mosey along to the bottom half of the second inning. All that Pittsburgh damage came in the first. Which is their first three-run inning since May 8th at Arizona. Well, left-handed hitters hit 310 off of Anderson. The big reason lefties take away that changeup. You know, against right-handed hitters, likes to change speeds and throw that changeup down and away to right-handed hitters. As you take a look at the scouting report on him, he that, has that deceptive delivery to go along with that big curveball. McGriff tries to line that one to left center field. Diving play by Hermanson. And he comes up with a dandy. One up, one man down. Well, Hermanson with a great jump from center field, shading Fred McGriff towards right center. And the crime dog against left-handed pitching likes to go the other way. Play in center by the youngster. And here's Moise Salu. Alu hitting 161 with a couple of home runs. It may seem like a minor detail, but as we keep moving along here, notice the shadows of that light tower creeping across the diamond toward the pitcher's mound. First few innings figure to be a little more difficult for the hitter until 
the lights take effect. It's approaching quarter till five here in Chicago. Shadows creeping across the diamond. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, particularly with a breaking ball. When you have shadows, difficult to pick up the rotation of that slider or that curveball. I felt like Moises Alou in that last series, even though coming off a disappointing road trip of three for 22, had some pretty good at bats. Well, there's the start. First cut base runner, Alou walks for Robert Machado. And for a ball club that has struggled to score, Dave, three runs right now must feel like 10 until they can put together some innings. Again, talking with Bill Miller, Cubs really have not been able to do to the opposing defense is what every defense hates to see happen, and that is first and third, first and third, first and third. That's just been such a, a missing ingredient in the Cub offensive attack so far this year. Well, you get base runners, and they can do some things. Hit and run, sacrifice, bunt, or whatever, just to get something, get that defense that that active and put some heat on them. Machado punts at the plate. Interesting decision. Strike one to the Cubs catcher, hitting 273. Well, Ramirez playing a fairly deep third base. Be interesting to see here whether he creeps up a little bit. Still playing beyond that third base back. Big hole in right center field if Machado can go the other way with an Anderson pitch. Young plays in front of the base runner at first, and Machado drives that one to right. Long run, Makoviak. And the wind plays a few tricks, but he makes the catch. And the quick throw back to first, not in time to get Moises Alou. So two outs for Bobby Hill. You know, I really think against... Jimmy Anderson, that's what you have to try and do against him. Try and take him the other way because he has been wild inside, not able to establish that inside corner in his previous starts. So he can almost take away that inside half and look out over the plate and drive it to right center field. Well, we saw what kind of energy Bobby Hill can bring a ball club over the final couple of innings up in Milwaukee. It was Bobby Hill scored the last two Cub runs. And uh, running into Bobby downtown yesterday, he said, I finally felt like in the last two or three innings of that game that I was being the kind of player that I want to be as a major league player. And it takes a young player some time to feel like they belong, doesn't it? You know, the tendency when you get called up is you try to do too much. Hot shot. Nobody gets that. In the hole with a two-out hit is Hill. First and second for the Cubs for Mark Bellhorn. It's been a very pleasant power source for the Cubs at all four infield spots. You get up here and you think, wow, I'm in the big leagues now. i got to be that much better. Well, you just have to trust your talent. And that time, you know, the threat of that bunt and Ramirez having to respect it there, playing even with the bag, and Hill was able to drive it through the hole. Mark Bellhorn's hitting over 400 from the right side of the batter's box. Four home runs, 12 driven in. And a base hit here could score Alou. Pretty good arms in the Pirate outfield. If nothing else, they're pretty accurate. And Jason Kendall out to settle down Anderson here. I saw that last pitch from Anderson. And that's what left-handers, when they do struggle on that inside pitch, they have the tendency to really spike it down and in. So as a hitter, you can almost take that away from him, look out over the plate and drive something. One ball, no strike to Bellhorn. Ball two with Jason Bure waiting next. discipline and I'm turning him loose right here if he gets a pitch in his window let her rip 
balls, one strike to the Cubs shortstop, Mark Bellhorn. And the runners will move with two outs now. And that's what you have to battle as a hitter against a guy like Anderson through a couple fastballs that actually cut inside the right hand. And there's that time he threw a tailing fastball that moved away to Bellhorn. Alou at second, Hill at first, the three-two pitch with two outs. Runners go. And it's ball four. Anderson walks the number eight man. And now no place to put Jason Bure, who's hitting 154. And he'll hit with two outs. The Buckos leading by three. Walks are a problem for the Pirate pitcher. Two of them in this inning. Now we'll see if Bure can knock home a run or two here in the second inning. Bure's last outing in St. Louis, I believe, hit a double to left center. Chopper up the middle. Wilson at short. Fields and flips to Pokey Reese in time. And that will retire the side. Cubs load the bases with two outs, but fail to score. And after two, the Pirates lead by three. Ford store is making this the spring sales event you're never going to forget. It's easier than one, two, three. You get both 0% APR plus a 1,000 cash back. Combine that with no interest and no payment for 90 days on select new Ford cars, trucks, and Ford utilities. That's 0% APR plus a 1,000 cash back. That's right, you get both. Combined with no interest and no payment for 90 days. And it's easy to see why Ford's got five of the 10 best-selling vehicles in America. Get to your local Ford store by May 31st. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. I'm Al Pomani, and at Al Pomani Ford, I just made a special purchase, and it's for retail customers only, no wholesalers invited. I just bought 60 Escort Station Wagons, 1999, fully equipped. And right now you can buy one for $59.95. That's right, $59.95 or $100 down and $100 a month. That's right, $100 down and $100 a month at Alphamonte Ford in Melrose Park. We bought more so you can save more. I'm Alphamonte, and I guess I'm known in Chicago for giving great deals. Well, today I'm talking about the great deals at my Nissan dealership, Alphamonte Nissan. That's right, Al. Now at Alphamonte Nissan. We've made a special purchase of pre-driven 2001 Altimus, and you can drive one for only $10,995, or for just $100 down and only $169 a month. And you get those great deals at Alphamonte Nissan on North Avenue at Mannheim. Public transportation to and from Cubs games. The CTA Red Line stops directly at Wrigley Field right here at the Addison Station for night games at Wrigley. Fans that do drive should take advantage of the remote parking operation at the DeVry Institute near Addison and Western and a shuttle bus ride to and from Wrigley Field, all for $5. For more details, call the CTA hotline at 773-836-7000. All three pirate runs came in the first inning. Jason Bure got him one, two, three in the second. And now in the third, he'll face Wilson, Giles, and Ramirez. And now look at where the shadows for the hitter. Big advantage for the pitchers now, you'd figure. They're pitching out of the bright sunshine. While the hitter is bathed in shadow. to the scrappy Pirate shortstop. That'll ever be as scrappy as Phil Garner, though. Scrap iron. Boy, how about those ball clubs? Late 70s. Omar Marino, Willie Stargell, Tony Pena was on those teams. Bill Madlock. Dave Parker. Dave Parker, of course. I'll never forget the throw he made in the All-Star game. Right field. Remember that? Yep. I think he nailed Bob Boone, if I'm not mistaken, with King Dome. Well, 
they've had some great ball clubs still searching though a couple of playoff appearances in the early 90s but they were a victim of the economics of the game lost a bunch of players lost Barry Bonds hey there's no crying in baseball <laughs> there is at that age 2-2 two -two pitch and the dirt all count Young Cup fan. That's a foul ball. Not too happy with the way things have started. Ball four. Beret loses Wilson. Lead off walk begins the third inning for Pittsburgh. And here's Giles. Rolled into a force play that should have been a double play. I think first base umpire Mike Van Vliet missed it. And that uh, allowed the Pirates to, in large part, score their three runs. that breaking ball he got it over for a strike Pirates last playoff appearance back in 92 played the Reds in 90 Braves in 91 and the Braves also in 92 and who can forget that playoff game against the Atlanta Braves Sid Bream scoring from second base Francisco Cabrera the man with the base hit to left Barry Bonds throw to Mike Lavier. Eyelash too late. No balls and a strike to Brian Giles. Driven into the right field corner. That's going to be real trouble. Wilson can really, really run. And he's going to be able to score easily on this play. Giles around second. He's on his way to third. The hill throw is off target. Giles with a triple makes it four to nothing. Pittsburgh. Two triples for Giles, 17 RBI. Well, you throw that posh, and sometimes that's a difficult pitch to control. However, you're, if you're going to miss, you want to miss away. And that one right in Giles' wheelhouse down the right field line. Well, you because know, hitters are out on their front foot against that pitch. And if you're bailing a little bit, you can still get after it. There's a drive deep to right off the bat of Aramis Ramirez. He'll have successive sacrifice flies. Giles scores easily to make it five to nothing Pittsburgh. Can we start this thing over? A do-over? No, Ramirez, 112 RBIs last year. And this is 11th, his second sacrifice fly of this ball game. Man on third, all he's doing is looking for something up and out over the plate to drive that run in. Base is empty for McCobiak. He walked and scored back in the first. The Cubs really were hoping to see both Beret and Juan Cruz, today's game two starter, right the ship. I don't think anyone in the organization, much less Major League Baseball, thought that in the middle of May those two men would be a combined one for 13. Well, particularly the way that Jason Beret threw the ball last year. That was really his second full season coming off arm problems. Last year, throwing 188 pitches in those 32 starts. Towards the end of last year, felt like his fastball was all the way back. Go along with that breaking ball. However, this year has really struggled. Chip, you mentioned those two starts that Beret did have that were good against the Pittsburgh Pirates to start off his year. Kendall, a mile high pop up on the right side of the diamond. Fred McGriff handles that cleanly. Two runs, one hit, a walk, a triple, and a sack of fly. Plates two more for the Pirates, and they have a huge five-run lead very early.
making friends fly free from Southwest Airlines. Simply purchase a special discounted fare starting at $59 and a friend comes along for free. You are now free to move about the country. I'll go to the hair cutting pros and super cut. Just look what they did for my team. looks so good. For a supercut, come see the train stylist at Supercut and follow driver Kerry Earnhardt this racing season. The E-Class comes with scheduled maintenance included. Don't you wish everything in life did? service unlike any other. Introducing the best damn sports show period. It's comedy, commentary, and all the scores and highlights you can possibly stand. It's not sex, but it's close. The best damn sports show period. Tonight at 10. After our doubleheader, it's Fifth Third Bank Cubs Post. All the highlights and analysis from Eric Goodman and Mike Balecki. Don't miss Fifth Third Bank Cubs Post right after our doubleheader here on Fox Sports Net. All the analysis of the first two games of this four-game series and a look forward, a look back, and a look in between at Mark Pryor's first day or so in the big leagues. Five to nothing, believe it or not. Pirates have the lead. Remember, the Cubs are playing a team that has scored the few, fewest runs, has the lowest batting average, and has hit the fewest home runs in the National League. They've got five against Jason Bure in the first three innings of this doubleheader opener. Oh, with this big hole, trying to solve Jimmy Anderson. Anderson, a ninth-round selection by the Pirates in the 94 free agent draft, and it was a big year for him. Arbitration eligible after this year, and you know, it's kind of been a enigma. Is that a good word? I don't know what it is in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about it. You know what it is in English? <laughs> <laughs> Three balls and a strike. You're the best. That's over at the knees. Full count. I think you're saying that uh, they don't really know what they have in Anderson. Is that what you're... Ex that's exactly what an enigma is. 17-game loser last year. <laughs> <laughs> Roller to the mound. One man down. Uh, Cubs have hit one, two, three balls out of the infield in the game so far. Well, and that's... When he is throwing the ball well, that's what he does. Throws that sinker, failing sinker to right-handed hitters. <laughs> But you're right, Chip. Uh, you know, he, he's the type of guy where it is a pretty comfortable 0 for 4. And he throw, I, mean, I don't want to say he throws strikes because he walks more than he strikes out, but it seems to me, Dave, he lets you put the ball in play. And if you try to pull this guy, no chance. You, you're out. That's ball low to Miller. Two balls, no strikes. The Cubs are down five runs. The last time the Cubs scored eight runs was, or five runs or more, was May 7th when they beat the Cardinals eight to nothing here. Hmm. In fact, the Cubs have scored five runs or more just 10 times all year. This is game number 42. Three balls and a strike to Miller as we've reached five o'clock. And Bill pulls that foul past Gene Glenn over at third. One offer, congratulations to the coach, Ron Santo, and the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Last night at the downtown Chicago Marriott, Ronnie was honored as the JDRF's 2002 Man of the Year. As Miller's aboard for Sosa, Ronnie is devoted his entire life as he's joined by his grandson Sammy Brown 
entire life to finding a, a cure for that debilitating disease. And last night's banquet and semi-roast earned nearly $700,000 for a cure for diabetes. So couldn't have picked a more deserving person. And it was just a, a wonderful night. Pat Hughes, the fine voice of the Cubs, was the MC of the event. Where John McDonough and Steve Carver were on the dais as well. It was just a, a wonderful evening. Things didn't go so well in the third for the Cubs. However, nothing happening. After three, Pittsburgh with a five-run lead. I do for every morning I get out of bed and put on the same clothes and drink the same coffee. I do for every day I have to sit in the same traffic. I do for the work and the work. I do... Ready, Dad? ...for that. Introducing the new 155 horsepower Sea-Doo four-stroke watercraft. Cleaner, quieter, cooler. What have you done for your family lately? Buy a new Sea-Doo watercraft now and get free gas. Y'all ready for this? Ready for the adventure, the value, the variety? It's Toyota's nationwide summer event featuring our versatile SUV. Right now, get financing as low as 1.9% on the popular 4Runner. That 1.9 rate will save you lots in financing. Or maybe you prefer $1,500 cash back any way you choose. Now is your opportunity to get great savings on this amazing SUV. Y'all ready for this? Get the Toyota you've been wanting now. We're ready. Are you Tell you. you first. No, you go. I'm not ready to get married. Okay. So, what was your news? I won the lottery. $63 million. Think about it this way, man. After taxes, that's only like $28, $30 million. That's it. Yeah. Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. Shannon? Hey, it's Steve. What's going on? The wait on the north side is finally over. Mark Pryor makes his major league debut, but Giles and the Pirates are out to spoil the party. Cubs, Pirates, tomorrow at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net Plus. Time now to revisit the Smirnoff game plan that we talked about during the pregame show, and this has been a pattern all year, by When the team isn't winning, it's hard to hit your keys. I think you got to blame the whole season on, uh, on Dave and myself. <laughs> you know, we're trying to pull some things out of our hat here, and it's not working. I said for us to score early, you get the crowd into it and everything. We're down by five. Dave, what do you have? Well, I, well that my game plan of running against Jimmy Anderson can't do it, really, when you're down by five runs. And Jason Bray tried to establish that breaking ball early on, but was hurt by a couple hanging breaking balls. And the Cubs have a hole to get themselves out of. Here's Kevin Young. Young flying out to right. And with all the talk and the hype about Mark Pryor's arrival today, five Mark Pryors aren't going to help you score runs. If you can't get people out and you can't drive them in, you're going to have problems. And we've got big ones tonight. Kevin Young out on the Waveland Avenue. That's only his fourth home run of the year. The Pirates lead it by six. Kevin Young coming into this ball game hitting 187 because he struggled hitting the fastball. And that particular pitch from Jason Bray, hanging breaking ball. I think he's got that. Hits the slider well. And he got one. Dizzy Dean would have said that's a slider that slid. <laughs> and it got crushed. So Pittsburgh with just 22 home runs all year. It's their first here in the fourth, and Jason Bure, you got to start to be concerned, Dave. He has not been able to put much together at all, all year long. Bellhorn at short, takes care of Pokey Reese. And one in, one out, bases empty for Jimmy Anderson. A look at today's Aflac trivia question. It is, who holds the Cubs record for most base hits in a doubleheader? Mick Kelleher. That's my answer, and I'm sticking with it. Are you going to stick with it if I tell you you're wrong? <laughs> I just, well, I kind of knew I was wrong. Oh, okay. 
One ball, no strikes to Jimmy Anderson. So you know the answer. Huh? Reading his fundamental, pal. <laughs> can't reveal the answer because of our contractual ob obligations to Aflac. So we'll have to wait to the format says we can do it, which is the bottom half of the inning. Davey Rosello? No. Not Dave Kingman, not Dave Rosello, not Dave Otto. Ground ball again to short. Mel Horn takes care of the Pirate pitcher, who has a whopping six-run lead. Paul Popovich? Nope. Glenn Beckert, not Randy Hundley. Keep going. Johnny Callison. No. Not Jose Cardinal. Give me an era. Huh? Give me an era. Recent? No. 60s and 70s. Late 50s, 60s and 70s. Ball one to Hermanson. He was in the ballpark today. Hmm. In uni? Yeah. God. Is that a hint for me? <laughs> I can't. I couldn't read it. Line drive down the left field line. Hermanson will have his second base hit. for the Pirates center fielder. Well, it's no secret right now, Jason Bray is not throwing the ball well. However, you're down by six runs in this ball game. You have nine more innings after this. So you're a starter in that first ball game. If you give up some runs early, you're going to stay out there. Yeah, you got to take it for the team now. You don't want to burn up the bullpen. In game one of a doubleheader, the Cubs see the next off day will not be until June 6th when we travel to Seattle. Uh, Ron Mayhe is going to get up now and at least start to loosen up. There are two outs. There's a run in, and Wilson, one for one with a walk and a run score. Just when you thought the Cubs were ready to, again, maybe take advantage of the breaks they made for themselves and got in Milwaukee. Remember, the Brewers were one fly ball away from winning that game in their last at bat. It just has not worked out that way. Beret's thrown the ball very, very poorly. Six runs on six hits. Well, what I see, strikes. what what I see from Jason Beret is, you know, last year had that good live fastball. And what was encouraging about last year, coming off a year in which he had 30 starts, and then last year with 32 starts. Your arm starts coming back after that. And he's not going to be the same pitcher as he was with the White Sox, where he had that good fastball, and he was able to challenge guys upstairs with it. Now he has to change a little bit as a pitcher, changing speeds more, throwing your breaking ball along with your Fosh. But boy, it's always nice as a pitcher to have that security blanket where you can throw that fastball right by guys. And right now, Jason does not have that fastball where he can go to upstairs and climb the ladder on guys. Just missed. Two balls, two strikes. lovely faces in the crowd. Things aren't looking too good on the field. Six run hole to the lowly Pirates. And uh, Wilson backs away from that pitch that slipped out of Array's hands. Three balls, two strikes. You know, this is a pattern right here against Jack Wilson coming into this ballgame. Hitting 191 and obviously struggling, boy. And again, you've got the pitcher pitching in the bright sunshine. In that shadow, it's awfully tough for the hitter to recognize the pitch. Hey, throw that fastball. Little ground ball hit toward Bill Miller at third. And that will mercifully retire the side. Kevin Young hits a home run out onto Waveland Avenue. 
Hermanson with a two-out double is left stranded. After three and a half, Pittsburgh has... Not too close. What do you think? I got that insurance? What insurance is that, Yogi? I'm what? The one you really need to have. If you don't have it, that's why you need it. Need what? I'm what? Well, if you get hurt and miss work, it won't hurt to miss work. Uh-huh. And they give you cash, which is just as good as money. Half lack. Ask about it at work. <laughs> Cubs Care doesn't see things as they are. We see things as they could be. So we turn vacant lots into baseball fields. Help girls build their athletic skills. And get kids off streets and into after-school programs. The way we see it, there's potential everywhere. It's just a matter of how you look at it. Oh, come on, let's get this guy. It's got to be over 100 degrees out there. You have any idea what that does to an engine? Need a motor oil for hot temperatures? We developed one. Pennzoil Synthetic resists thinning to protect engines in hot summer conditions. Pennzoil, we're driving protection. Get ready for summer with Pennzoil Synthetic. Now at Jiffy Lube, the well-oiled machine. It's gonna be a slugfest at Fenway. Conerco in the White Sox. Nomar in the Red Sox. White Sox, Red Sox, tomorrow at 5.30 on Fox Sports Net. All right, Dave. You got a chance to extend your your streak of correct Aflac trivia question answers to one. <laughs> Steve Onaveris. No. <laughs> Billy Williams holds the Cubs record for most base hits. Had eight of them against the Houston Astros in 1972. And Cubs could use a bunch of them right here. Trailing by six, Fred McGriff leads things off. And he looks... And a ball low. Billy Williams will be one of our special guests tomorrow night as uh, he and Tyson Chandler are going to talk during our ball game. Pokey Reese to a knee. Another ground ball out. One up, one down. Fred McGriff is 0 4 2. Want to wish a very happy birthday to Steve Mazur, the proud father of WGN Radio's Andy Mazur, who does such a great job of hosting the pregame show on the Cubs far-flung radio network and is also taking good care of Ron Santo on the road. So Mr. Mazur, happy birthday, happy number 60, and we're very happy to have your son along. He's a terrific kid. First pick swinging Alu, another ground ball, another easy out. And boy, these are fun games for teams like the Pirates to play. They don't score this many this often. And with Anderson just throwing ground ball after ground ball, the Cubs run a futility against lefties continues, and they've got a lot of spring in their step, and the Cubs still searching everywhere they can for answers. Well, and the Pirates running into a buzzsaw in Houston, losing the first three games, and then finally winning that fourth game against that Astro Ball Club. All of a sudden, that Houston team was some pretty good pitching. A strike to Robert Machado. Anderson's never lost to the Cubs. He's 2-0 lifetime. And uh, it's going to take a big comeback for the Cubs to change this score around. 6 to nothing. Pittsburgh has the lead. Well, when you go out to that mound and you have a six-run lead, it's almost as if you automatically find your rhythm. You're that much more comfortable on the mound. Able to change speeds. However, this game's one nothing for a tight ball game. That's when you put pressure on that pitcher. Machado skies that one to the right side. Young is out. Pokey Reese takes over, and it's a very easy fourth inning. We go to the fifth. Pittsburgh six. Cubs nothing.
Offsite technicians are dedicated. Very, very dedicated. Hey, you got a plan. The E-Class, like every Mercedes-Benz, comes with roadside assistance for the life of the car. Service unlike any other. Is this your idea of getting fit? At Gottlieb Health and Fitness Center, we take a different approach to exercise. Our members come in all ages, shapes, and sizes, and we emphasize safety and fun, not drudgery and pain. We'll start you with fitness testing, design a workout plan for you, then give you plenty of help. And here are the fun parts. Low-impact aerobics on land and in the water, racquetball, tai chi, and so much more. We're the Healthier Health Club. Come in for a tour and a free workout pass. The best price is on a new Buick at Maury Edelton Cadillac Buick Oldsmobile in Hodgkins. Buy this new LeSabre for just $19,995, which includes a $3,000 rebate or 1.9% financing. Or drive out in a new rendezvous for just $21,495 with a $2,000 rebate or 1.9% financing. Simply the best experience, always the best price. At Maury Edelton Cadillac Oldsmobile and Buick in Hodgkins. Damn sports show, period. Tonight at 10. Big first inning for the Pirates. They scored three times. The big blow, a Jason Kendall double with two outs. Last score, Giles and Makoviak. And then Kevin Young with a big ex exclamation point. A solo home run in the fourth inning, out onto the street and left. Makes it a six-run Pirate lead heading to the fifth inning and Dave there's the rest of your Ford game summary and Jason Bray up to this point giving up those six runs to go along with six hits from the Pirates and we talked about this Pirate ball club really struggling offensively 16th in average 16th in runs last in home runs but when you don't make good pitches you're going to get hurt Brian Giles leads off the Pittsburgh fifth. He's been on base twice, and he has scored twice. They have built their team and their ballpark around this guy. You think about that short porch down the right field line by the river. They anticipate seeing Brian Giles pound home run ball after home run ball into those bleacher seats in right. What are you talking about? Some of the players that the Cleveland Indians have traded away, and certainly a successful franchise the last eight or nine years, but at the same time, they've traded away Brian Giles for Ricardo Rincon, traded away Richie Sexton, Sean Casey. For a while there, that Cleveland Indian farm system was pumping out some pretty, pretty good hitters. But you think about who they had. Where, where would those guys have played? You had Jim Tomey, you had Robbie Alomar, you had Omar Vizquel, you had Travis Fryman, Sandy Alomar Jr. behind the plate. Then in the outfield, you had Bell, you had Lofton, and you had Manny Ramirez. Where would a guy like Brian Giles be able to be an everyday player? A Russell Brain, you know, Richie Sexton. So that's the other area where a team like Cleveland used its farm system to fill the holes that they didn't have the availability to fix themselves. So they would trade a Giles for a left-handed relief pitcher, uh, Ricky Rincon, because they thought that would be another piece that would get them to the World Series and to the Ultimate Championship. And Sexton for Bob Wickman. Jason Bure and Steve Woodard. And they tried to, they made that deal late in, I believe the year 2000, when uh, they made a great second half surge and very nearly made the postseason, the final weekend of the regular season. But that's the, remember, I'll never forget Luke Gorman when he was the general manager of the Boston Red Sox. He's the man that so many people in Boston continue to just bury because he traded Jeff Bagwell for Larry Anderson. Oh, so many years ago. And what Gorman said really rings true. The general manager's responsibility is to try to win now. You don't try to necessarily win five years from now because in all likelihood, if you don't, you won't be there five years from now. So he always felt that if you had a chance to put together a team that could win and get to the World Series, you bite the bullet and you get there because that's the one year you can control. 
And while he knew that he was giving away a pretty good player in Jeff Bagwell, he never in his wildest dreams imagined that he'd blossom into the perennial all-star that he is. And Larry Anderson was a perfect addition to that Boston ball club. Now, of course, they didn't win the World Series. Anderson's been out of baseball as a player for a long time. Jeff Bagwell starring for many years in Houston, but Luke Orman did his job. Well, just like John Smoltz and Doyle Alexander, Tigers made the playoffs that year because of Doyle Alexander, and they lost, obviously, John Smoltz, but at the same time, that one year, they got to the dance. That's it, and it's always, it's always fun in sports to to Monday morning quarterback or second guess or, or whatever term you want to use, but you don't know if a player is going to have a great season one year to the next. I mean, a player like a Sammy Sosa or a Frank Thomas when healthy, those guys are just remarkable in their consistency. Fly ball to center. Two men down. Back to first will go Giles as uh, Makoviak is retired for the second time in the game. I mean, look at this Cub team. I don't think anyone in their wildest imaginations thought that Fred McGriff would struggle as mightily as he has or Moise Salu would. The fact of the matter is they have, and everyone in this town is very quick to blame the manager or management. <laughs> well, those same people, January 15th, were saying, hey, those are great signings. The Cubs might win the division and go to the World Series. I certainly was one of them that thought that was possible particularly with Fred McGriff last year when the Cubs were able to get the crime dog. I always look at it, you're a ball club and you're in the hunt. And it's like a poker game. If you need that two of spades to fill that straight flush, <laughs> that two of spades means a lot to you as a poker player and the same as an organization, really. The Cubs felt like Fred McGriff was the missing piece of the puzzle. And at the time, certainly it was. Unfortunately, the Cubs did not play well down the stretch. And it certainly was not the fault of Fred McGriff at the end of last year. But, you know, that was a trade that you know, I give the Cubs a ton of credit for making because it gave them their best shot. Ground ball to Bellhorn and short in between hop. And he takes care of Jason Kendall. We are halfway through this ball game. And unfortunately, the Cubs have only one hit. Pirates have six and six runs with which to play. service geico gets you back on the road fast geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance take me fishing because our boat's cooler than any video game take me fishing and to make me feel 16 again take me fishing because i miss my boy Ford store is making this the spring sales event you're never gonna forget. Get the best deal of the year on a new Ford Windstar. You get both 0% APR and a thousand cash back. Plus, get a free family entertainment system worth over $900. 0% APR and a thousand cash back. Combined with no payment for 90 days, and it's easy to see why Ford's got five of the 10 best selling vehicles in America. Get to your local Ford store by May 31st. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Pennzoil. We're driving protection. Corona Extra. Miles away from the ordinary. And by your local Chicagoland Mercedes-Benz dealer. Six to nothing in favor of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hard to believe it. This is a Pirate ball club that in their last five games had scored a grand total of 17 runs. They're a more than a third of the way there through one half of game one of this doubleheader. So if the Cubs are going to get anything done, they better start pretty quickly here. As Bobby Hill leads off the fifth, 
David Avila of Chicago is our Toyota Fan of the Game contestant. If the Cubs score in the fifth, David wins a Fox Sports Net Toyota prize package, including a hat and a T-shirt. Two balls, no strikes. Well, Bobby Hill, a naturally right-handed hitter, started switch hitting senior in high school. And I love to see young kids learn how to switch hit. Boy, how valuable you are as a player to be able to swing the bat from both sides. And, you know, even though he got started late switch hitting, feels like you know his left side has turned into his power side. And with the amount of at-bats that Bobby Hill gets swinging the bat left-handed, it's turned into probably his, his, his stronger side all around. Two-two. Cold foul past Gene Glynn with... Beret spot due up third here in the fifth. You figure he'll be taken down for Ron Mayhay. Two-two pitch. Lance in the dirt. Three balls, two strikes. Well, Dave, you seen any good movies lately? <laughs> um, I just watch animated movies now, Chip. Oh, I'd say. <laughs> hey, good at bat by Hill. There's your fourth walk from Anderson. Again, the Cubs have not made him work all that hard. Four walks and four innings plus, trailing by six. There's a good start. You know, and Spin Williams, the pitching coach for the Pirates in his second year, felt like last year with Jimmy Anderson, overcoached him a little bit. As you take a look at Bill Verdon, Quail, who's been in baseball for what, a long time, the bench coach for the Pirates. But Spin Williams was talking about just trying to do too much with the pitcher. And I think uh, you know, that happens a lot in this ball game, where you get somebody a rookie or, or second year player and you try and do too much with them and what happens is you end up working on your mechanics and then all of a sudden you just get all out of whack. I think when you get up to the big leagues here it just has to be that little minor adjustment. What they were working with with Anderson was trying to be a little quicker to the plate. strikes to Mark Bellhorn. Cubs need a prolonged inning. They have only one hit. That was a Bobby Hill single past Ramirez at third. Swung on it high in the air right center field and easily handling it is Hermanson. One out. Chris Steins will come off the bench and bat for Beret. Jason went five innings, six runs earned, six hits, three walks, two strikeouts, one home run. Eighty pitches for Beret, 49 of them strikes. Here's Chris Steins. He's hitting 197. You know, Pittsburgh does something a little strange, in my opinion, and certainly with a six-run lead. But what they do is, with the left-handed pitcher up, they play that first baseman off the bag, and if he goes over to first base, the first baseman moves over to first base. 
but they even do that in tight ball games. And I know as a former left-handed pitcher, it's, sometimes it's difficult to throw over to first base if you don't have a target over there. Tough to hit a moving target. Yeah, I don't. I, I really don't like that play particularly. Seems to me like with that moving target, with the ball, the base runner, and the tag all having to happen at the same time, it requires so much more synchronization, and the odds of messing the play up rise exponentially as a result. Well, for left-handed pitchers, Chip, that synchronization, you got that right. <laughs> That's tough. Swinging butt back to the mound. He'll take the easy play at first. High throw. Young held the bag, though. He'll take second. Two men out. And Corey Patterson is due. Sometimes that pitcher does give a true throw over to first base. You almost lob it over there, and that's when you get in trouble. For all you young pitchers out there, hey, throw a good hard strike over to first base. Well, Dave, Dave Kaplan, fine host of Sports Central on WGN Radio and Channel 5 eagerly approached our broadcast booth telling us that we've had our first major spill of the day in the Cubs radio booth. I'll give you two guesses as to who's responsible. <laughs> Way outside, ball one, strike one. I got my guess. Well, let me hear it. Ronnie. Very good. <laughs> uh, the man is is the Joseph Hazelwood of of eating. It's just amazing. Everywhere he goes, a spill follows. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. What's he wearing? Is it soup? Something that doesn't stain, like coffee. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. And that one got Kendall. He's all right. Patterson stays alive. Cubs need a hit to get on the board here. You've got good speed out at second base. Food? Does coffee count as food? Swing and a miss. Patterson swung at a ball that nearly bounced up there, and Anderson's qualified for the win. Six to nothing, Pittsburgh the lead. If there's lots of places that you would like to see, fly Southwest Airlines, because friends fly free. For romance. Give it a chance. Fly so you can dance. Fly so you can cry. Fly. Because it's America. From and if you fly Southwest Airlines, your friend flies free. Announcing friends fly free from Southwest Airlines. Simply purchase a special discounted fare starting at $59, and a friend comes along for free. You are now free to move about the country. Here's what I know. The only exciting part of a basketball game is the final two minutes. And anyone who owns a sports franchise should be a fan first and then run the team that way. There's a big difference between the right girl and the right now girl. Do what you love and don't apologize for it. Music is religion. Karaoke is a cult. Well done is overdone. And if you're going to draw a map of your life, do it in pencil and then redraw it over and over again. Nah, that's not what I want to say. Rattle, rattle, thunder, clatter, boom, boom, boom. CarX brakes for life. Never pay for brake pads or shoes again from just $69.95. CarX, more than you thought, for less than you'd think. Don't worry, call the CarX man. You root for them, believe in them. Now you can invest in them. Introducing eTops.com. This week, get these limited edition, one-of-a-kind sports cards. Track their value on your own online portfolio. Look how previous cards have gone up. Get to eTops.com today. Introducing the best damn sports show, period. It's comedy, commentary, and all the scores and highlights you can possibly stand. 
It's not sex, but it's close. <laughs> the best damn sports show, period. Tonight at 10. Welcome back to Wrigley Field. Sammy Sosa and Autobiography was the giveaway today, and you kids got your free copies of this. First of all, do you like Sammy Sosa? Is he your favorite player? Yeah! yeah. Sammy! Sammy. Sammy. Are you guys going to read this book? You betcha. Yeah. Of course. It's awesome. Of course. What are you hoping to learn from this? Experience. What it's like to be a Major League ball player? What it's like to be yeah, Sammy of Sosa? Yeah. Of course. All right, I'm sure you kids are going to start reading this tomorrow, after school, of course. Yeah. Chip and Dave, back to you. All right, Gail, thank you very much. And kids, no matter what Mr. Otto says, a Lobo does not mean, what is it you said? Wild and raw. Yeah, no, that's... That's bovine scatology, pal. Sixth inning rolls around. Ron Mayhay will face Young, Reese... <laughs> And Jimmy Anderson, who, by the way, has given up only one hit today. Ron Mayhay is the second Cub pitcher of game one. Wait a minute. Wait, what? Bovine Scientology? What would you say? No, not Scientology. <laughs> I'll let you. are a college graduate. You can figure that out. But it took me six years. <laughs> Ground ball to third. Gobbled up. And out is Young. Four out. Number one. Well, if you like golf, stakes, and baseball, Don Baylor and Joe Girardi want you. On June 17th, Baylor and Girardi will host the second annual Don Baylor Celebrity Golf Classic at Cantigny, Cantini Golf Course in Wheaton. Each foursome will team with a favorite sports or media celebrity for 18 glorious holes on a championship course. Food and beverages on the course will be provided by Smith & Walensky Restaurant and Budweiser. All proceeds from the event will benefit Cubs Care and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. For more information on sponsorships or foursome, call Jennifer Oglesby, Oglesby at the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation at 312-236-4491. How am I looking, Chip? You know, I, I, you're I, looking great. You sound terrible. But <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've only played Cantini about 20 times. <laughs> and I butchered it. Ah, uh, well, hey, man, it's just one of those days all the way around, unfortunately, as uh, Pokey Reese stands in. Oh. Just one of those days. I'll tell you what, that Cantini golf course. Very nice. Oh. And uh, we're looking forward to that event. Don does such a great job with it. Down goes Reese. Two up, two down for May. His first strikeout. Our good friends at Harry Carey's will also be providing a great uh, post-golf tournament banquet. Chef Andrew Coates will be whipping up something special. So belly on up for all the chicken Vesuvio you can handle. And if you need to warm up, you might as well head on out to the downtown restaurant at Rosemont, too, just to get your, your golf appetite in shape. No balls and a strike to Anderson, who is 0 for 2. You don't think Lloyd McClendon will let the Cubs start this one over, huh, from the very beginning? The old do-over. Yeah. Two strikes. Remember playing that as a kid? You know, you have do-overs all the time, right field sure. closed. Yeah. If only it were that easy. May hey, this is a good opportunity for him to get some work in. Has not pitched in a week his last outing on May 14th against the Cardinals. Now watch this. Who says crime doesn't pay? <laughs> Shot to short. Bellhorn dives, gathers, throws. Got his man. Good play at short by Mark Bellhorn. And the Pirates are retired in order in the sixth. Miller, Sosa, and McGriff coming up in a six-run Pirate game. Your local Ford store is making this the spring sales event you're never going to forget. It's easier than one, two, three. You get both 0% APR plus 1,000 cash back. 
Combine that with no interest and no payments for 90 days on select new Ford cars, trucks, and sport utilities. That's 0% APR plus 1000 cash back. That's right, you get both. Combined with no interest and no payments for 90 days. And it's easy to see why Ford's got five of the 10 best-selling vehicles in America. Get to your local Ford store by May 31st. The wait on the north side is finally over. Mark Pryor makes his major league debut, but Giles and the Pirates are out to spoil the party. Cubs, Pirates, tomorrow at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net Plus. Would you believe you can buy a 2002 Taurus for only $12,595 fully equipped? And that's a Sport Edition Taurus. That's right, $12,595 for a 2002 Taurus. Or $100 down and $199 a month. Alpha Monte Ford and Mellis Park, 25th through North Avenue. For richer, or poorer, in sickness and health, from this day forward, for all the days of my life. By the power vested in me by the great state of Nevada, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride, Chief. FunJet Vacation Summer Sale, Treasure Island, $379.95. Four nights, air and hotel, additional hotels available. To leave the city, see Nitty, 708-456-2950. Reinventing sports talk, as you know. It's the show that's changing the face of sports television forever. The best sports show period with host Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of ex-jocks. It's the only show that gives you sports comedy, commentary, scores, and highlights. The best sports show period tonight at 10 on Fox Sports. Mets, Ben Affleck, and Bill O'Reilly among the guests. After our game tonight, six to nothing. Jimmy Anderson works into the sixth inning. Let's see if the Cubs, Dave, can bow up and pick up their second hit or more here. It's hard to believe. Just one hit for the Cubs on the day. And that was off the bat of Bobby Hill in the second inning. Round ball between short and third. strike to Bill Miller nothing in one your count you know, one of the things that I forgot to do chip before the game talk to a couple of the pi pirate players about and I need to get clarification on this but I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell you the story anyways because it's never let the facts get in the way of a good story that's right well remember Ramon Martinez pitcher last year for the Pirates he had a wonderful career with the Dodgers yeah yeah a little blooper down the right field line. That's going to well, spray foul. Ramon is out of the game now, and I guess he built a plant in the Dominican Republic, <laughs> like a glass and window plant. Okay. And so he's selling windows. And Well, the problem was he built the plant on top of a hill. <laughs> And everything was running along smoothly until they actually had to ship the windows out. <laughs> Miller drives that right center field. Good jump by Hermanson. <laughs> One man out. Apparently the hill was kind of bumpy. And so they could never get the windows to the bottom of the hill because <laughs> they'd all break. Is that beautiful? And he's not even left-handed. I mean... Yeah, we saw him last year. I think he made his last appearance against the Cubs up in Pittsburgh yep. when he came out of a ball game. Boy, what a terrific career he had uh, as far as business acumen. I'm not so sure. Can you imagine that first trip down the hill? Oh. No balls and a strike to Sosa. Hard to believe it. Sammy's last RBI a week ago today. As many ball player would tell you, Dave, life after baseball can be a real pain. Well, I, I called Kevin Tappany a couple weeks ago. He wasn't home. 
<laughs> it was so <laughs> nice. I called Tap. He wasn't home. He was looking at riding lawnmowers. How about that? <laughs> the country squire, Kevin Tappany. Right. He's going to be a seventh inning stretch guest conductor later on this summer. Can't wait to see him. I figure a man of Kevin's means would have a a gardener handle that stuff for him. No, not that. Sosa drives it foul to the right side. Hey, great catch in the front row. Give that man a contract. Great grab off Sosa's bat. There really has been some terrific plays in the stands. We saw that woman snatch the ball right out of. Yeah, I mean, when your fans are having a better day than the people they've paid to watch, you know it's a rough day at the office. Three balls, two strikes. All eyes focusing on Sosa. 15 home runs on the year. Line drive to Ramirez. Two outs. And Ramos in the big leagues. You got to get three outs before you head to the dugout. Yeah, new rules this year. <laughs> He's been gone from the game for a while. He was on the DL. And then you kind of play it off. Oh, sure. When that happens. You take that jog into the dugout and then look. Just want to get a better angle to make this throw. Either that or his hand hurts. <laughs> He's just trying to make sure he can. He can feel the ball. Two outs. Here's McGriff over two. Great diving catch by Hermanson in left center. Robbed him of a single for sure and maybe more. Cubs loaded the bases with two outs in that second inning. Did not score and do not have a hit since. They're trying to make Anderson work, but he has the luxury of a real big lead. Three and zero oh to McGriff, who came through big last time we met up in Milwaukee. He homered in the 40th different ballpark in his major league career. He tied Carl Yastrzemski on the all-time home run list, and he moved into a tie with Joe Cronin for 50th all-time in RBIs in his major league career. First pitch up from this guy, Eno, Milwaukee Brewers relief pitcher. Tied that ball game up. Three two pitch. Strike three. Well, Griff was ahead three and oh. Anderson rallies and strikes him out. Three up, three down in the six. The Cubs still have only one hit. Alain Hurley owns a Hyundai Elantra. I researched it on the internet. There was no comparison. The competition can't match the freedom of America's best warranty. The warranty for the Elantra was the best out there. It also has a long list of features, including front and side airbags. It's the only car in its class that has them standard. The gas mileage is excellent. It's a great value for the money. The Hyundai Elantra at just $13,044. It's a solid value. Freedom is calling, yeah. Get $750 cash back or choose 0.9% APR financing now. We come from all over the world. Because we have doubts. Fears. There are times when we need to confront them. And then there are times when we realize... One more! We've got better things to do. It'll be over 100 degrees out there. You have any idea what that does to an engine? Need a motor oil for hot temperatures? We developed one. Pennzoil Synthetic resists any to protect engines in hot summer conditions. Pennzoil, we're driving protection. Get ready for summer with Pennzoil Synthetic. Now at Jiffy Lube.
the well-oiled machine. It's going to be a slugfest at Fenway. Conerco in the White Sox. Nomar in the Red Sox. White Sox, Red Sox, tomorrow at 5.30 on Fox Sports Net. Time now to revisit the Smirnoff game plan that we talked about during the uh, pregame show. We talked about it during the fourth inning. Not much has really changed. Still a one-hitter, and uh, this uh, Jimmy Anderson guy, give him a ticket to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, no kidding. Well, Dave, I got Corey 0 for 3, Freddy's 0 for 3. We're losing 6 nothing, and I did buy a lawn tractor last weekend when I went home, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I no, did. Nothing runs like a deer, right? <laughs> Well, I told me that's how he relaxes, riding his tractor. <laughs> you can take my game plan and blow it up. Chad Hermanson takes the ball low. Two balls, no strikes. We're in the seventh inning already. Well, I like he's probably got like a third of an acre, and he's got a riding lawn. <laughs> One more. <laughs> uh, a foul tip. Two balls and a strike. It's too complicated. Keep it simple. Lead off walk. That's four walks issued by the Cubs staff today. You may have to start breaking into some Santo material because uh, Ronnie, the last couple games, has been remarkably poised, remarkably calm. He's been talking about Chinese philosophy. Ronnie's been deep into Confucianisms. Not Confucianisms, which we know are a big part of his life, but Confucius. I'm sorry, Chip. I'm a little short on... Well, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, maybe you... you know, I guess that's what, you co that's what the color analyst is supposed to do, right? Uh, tomorrow I will come with... You have to philosophize about this kind of stuff. Well, you just take one game at a time, Chip. Now, see, that's pretty good. Uh, Play them where they ain't, hit them where they ain't, all that kind of stuff. Should I never step on the lines. Never talk to a pitcher if he has a no-no. Hot shot, base hit. Wilson has his second hit of the ball game. Hermanson holds it second, two on, nobody out for Brian Giles in the seventh inning. I never did get the never talking to the pitcher if there's a no-hitter. It's karma. You don't want to... Well, now you're getting into the realm of the supernatural, too. I mean, see, so you just got to let this out, Dave. Okay, well, never... And if you're struggling in the big leagues, call your manager Skip. They like that. <laughs> it may not get sent down. Did it work with Leland? No, it didn't. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just thought it asked. I tried everything. I'll bet. Popped up out of play. Like the time I'm hanging out my locker after a game, after giving up about five. That didn't happen often, I know. And hearing the manager say, why can't we get rid of Otto? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Way outside, Giles, one ball, two strikes. I'm trying to find some stuff on the internet for you just to give you a head start. But uh, the borrowed computer I'm using does not allow me to get to the we World Wide Web. It's very, very frustrating. I must admit. Giles backs away from that pitch. Two balls, two strikes.
nothing is worse than being computerless. In the modern day, fly ball deep to left. Alou on a full sprint. Diving try, can't get it. He slams into the wall, and he is still down, and that's a big problem. Two runs are in. Giles around third. They're going to go ahead and wave him. It's going to be an inside-the-park home run. Moise Salou hurt in the left field corner, and the Pirates have put a hurting on the Cubs, literally and figuratively. A head-first dive by Alou. He slams into the brick wall. Giles circles the bases, and Pittsburgh leads it by nine. Boy, you hate to see a left fielder or any fielder do what Moises Alou just did. And in tribute to Moises Alou, you're down six runs. You don't dive in that situation, but Moises Alou is a gamer, and we saw him hurt his back in Montreal on a similar type play going to the turf, and let's hope that back doesn't linger again. But my goodness. Ugh. You know, you're a pitcher, and you see somebody go like Moise Lou did right there. I mean, that is just flat out. That's a gamer right there. Golly. First inside the park home run for Giles in his career. First inside the park home run for the Pirates since Brant Brown did it in 1999. And it's the first inside the park home run in this ballpark since late last year when Sammy Sosa hit one, you recall, for the Cubs. So Alou is hurting, and so are the Cubs. Nine to nothing. And he is going to have to come out of the ballgame, it appears. Bad times continue. Roosevelt Brown will, will come on and play left and bat fifth. You know, it's not a smart decision by diving in that situation, but how can you tell a guy like Moises Alou not to try and make that play? You, know, you get between those white lines and you just get after everything. We were talking about karma before that play, and right now the only karma going for the Cubs, Dave, is bad karma. It's uh, just been a disastrous first six weeks of this season. And, you know, if the Cubs are going to be without Alou for any stretch of time, it's going to be even more difficult for this Cub team to score runs, which has been the overwhelming problem for this team. So walk a single and an inside the park home run for Brian Giles. And Pittsburgh running away with it in game one. Ramirez 0 for 1 with two sack flies and two RBIs. And he's going to be 0 for 2. One away here in the seventh. Downers Grove South football team, the 2001 Illinois Class 8A state champions, will be our seventh inning stretch guest conductors today. And a special treat in that, Sam Carson Jr., one of those football players, is one of Roosevelt Brown's cousins. Hmm. So we'll hear those fellas sing and then move on to the bottom half of the inning. Rob Bakobiak, the batter for Pittsburgh. One ball. No strikes. We can have the whole squad in here. The whole squad. I don't know about that. Pittsburgh, the lowest scoring team in the National League. Their season high in runs is nine. They've got it again today. They did that against the Phillies in late April. One ball, two strikes to Makoviak. Ball driven in the air to left. Rosie Brown will be tested. Two outs. In fact, the Pirates, the lowest scoring team in all of baseball, coming into play tonight. 
but they are in real good shape today. Here's Kendall. He's doubled home two. He's popped out and grounded out. Nine nothing. The Pirates with the lead. Eight hits for Pittsburgh, only one for the Cubs. And as soon as we get an update on Moise Salu, we'll pass that along to you. His diving try on a fly ball by Giles went unrewarded. He slammed into the bricks and had to leave the game. Kendall grounds to third, and that retires the side. Three runs, two hits and a walk. Let's welcome Downers Grove High School to guest conduct our seventh inning stretch. From Downers Grove High School. It's a great day to be a Downers Grove South Mustang and a Chicago Cubs fan. Let's hear you, Chicago. A one. A two. A three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ground. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I ever get back for its root. Root, root for the Cubbies. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Hit hard, Cubs. Let's get some runs. MGD. Pure beer for a pure night out. Hey everyone, Mitch Robinson at the Empress Casino in Juliet reminding you that time is running out on the Cold Cash Cool Cars giveaway. We've already given away the cold cash, but there's still time to enter for the cool cars. Someone's going to win this Cadillac Escalade or his and hers Mustang convertibles. The lucky winners will be drawn this Friday night at 7 right here at the Empress Casino. You must be present to win. So come on out to Empress Casino Joliet for the cold cash cool cars giveaway before it's too late. Southwest Airlines bringing people together with low fares and frequent flights. Call 1-800-IFLY-SWA or visit Southwest.com. Southwest Airlines, official airline of the Chicago Cubs. Benjamin takes over at third base. Adrian Brown in center. Chad Hermanson moves to left for the Pirates, who have a nine-run lead in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Our thanks to the folks from Downers South High School. Great job. Guest conducting the seventh inning stretch. And uh, again, I know Rosie Brown, awfully proud of his cousin, Sam Carson Jr., who was on that football team. State champions in Class 8A. I remember watching that ball game. It was a nail fighter back and forth against Naperville Central. I think what Downers had a tough ball game against Maine South to get to that state championship game. Beat Maine South 35 to 34. Ground ball by Rosie Brown to the right side. Pokey Reese, easy play. And it's just ground ball after ground ball from Jimmy Anderson today. One up, one down for Robert Machado. There are your changes. We'll show them to you. We want to send along get well wishes to Chicago fireman Neil Roman. Watching our telecast this afternoon. Hope he's feeling better. 9-0 your score for Machado. Machado 0 for 2 in the ball game. It's another one of those ball games where when you don't hit and you don't get much pitching, you look real bad. And that's pretty much sums up this particular game for me. Yeah, and early on uh, in this season, the Cubs, a couple of games here at Wrigley Field, down early and very difficult to swing the bats when you're down four or five runs. 
in those first couple of innings. Cubs coming into this ball game six and 14 here at Wrigley Field, and that was a big reason the Cubs were so successful last year in their 88 win season. There are 15 games over 500 right here at Wrigley Field. But obviously, Dave, this Cubs offense is not all it's quacked up to be. Is that Confucius? Uh, I sure hope not. Only one hit for the Cub offense. We've got Juan Cruz and Josh Fogg in game two, which will follow about a half hour at the end of this particular ball game. Fogg's already beaten the Cubs twice this year. And then, of course, everybody in baseball will turn their eyes to tomorrow night, which will also be a Fox Sports telecast. Mark Pryor will make his much anticipated, you can't say long awaited debut because he's only been in professional baseball a little over a year. And after what? Nine minor league decisions here. He'll find himself in the major leagues. Cubs will have a roster move to announce tomorrow as uh, Pryor will take someone's spot. There was some debate as to whom, if anyone, would make a move to the bullpen. Certainly Parade didn't help his cause with six runs, six hits, and five innings today. Juan Cruz also was a man that maybe was on the rotation bubble. That man, Scott Chasen, also has not fared particularly well. And then the Cubs also, as Machado dumps the second hit of the game into right field. Saturday, Cubs will get Alex Gonzalez back off the disabled list. And they'll have another move to make. So one on, one out for Bobby Hill. He's been on base twice. Is for the first time as a big leaguer tomorrow. I only had a chance to see Pryor pitch twice in the spring. One decent outing, the other one outstanding against the White Sox. And the thing that impressed me is you know, he come up to the big leagues and enable, hopefully he'll be able to throw all of his pitches because the time that I saw him, he was able to get his breaking ball over for strikes along with that changeup. And I think that's the biggest most important thing for a young pitcher getting to the big leagues is that ability to throw two or three pitches for strikes. And if anybody thinks, and I don't want to sound like the party pooper here, but if anybody thinks Mark Pryor is going to single-handedly be the savior for this ball club, you are sadly mistaken. And that is in no way a criticism of his talent or his potential. But unless he can hit seven home runs in a game and throw two-run or three-run ball games each and every time out, one guy can't do it alone, and the problems for the most part with this team have, as we've said so many times, been offense-related. Well, Chip, I think if, if the Cubs tomorrow were able to get Randy Johnson or Kurt Schilling in a trade for, let's say, a utility garden hose and a bucket of baseballs, yeah. and you put him in the rotation, you know, I'm not about to order the World Series rings yet. You know, it, it, a pitcher... You're pitching once every five days. And frankly, there, there's not that one player out there that can have that much of an impact on a ball club. It's certainly nice to see him in the big leagues. Roller toward Benjamin at third, low throw, but Young with a good stretch. And there's out number two. And again, we're not knocking for no, we, no. he, he may come out and throw a no-hitter tomorrow. He might come out and get lit up. We don't know. That's what makes it so exciting. But... The number two pick in the country, number one draft pick by the Cubs last year. So much expectation, so many things expected of him. It's almost as if he's being set up with those expectations not to succeed. And to his credit, he's handled things very, very nicely with regards to an incredible amount of media coverage. He's talking with Steve Carver, the general manager at WGN Radio at Ron Santos' event last night. He was in New York when Dwight Gooden was called up. Mm -hmm. And to the Chicago media's credit, the frenzy regarding Pryor is nowhere near what it was when Gooden came up so many years ago. They were already talking in New York about what year it would be that Dwight Gooden would win his 300th game, and 
right. how many guy, how many years it would take for him to pick up 3,000 strikeouts, and those kinds of comparisons for a young player, while extremely complimentary, to my way of thinking, are more a detriment than an aid because there's no way that someone can fulfill them. But, but at the same time, Chip, I think as a player, you have to put up with that and take that pressure off and go out there and do your job. That, and that's what he's done. He's put the blinders on and he'll say, hey, I'm going to pitch baseball. I'm here to earn a living and make baseball my vocation just like everybody else. The bench on the right is being painted with Krylon. The bench on the left with Rust-Oleum. After just 12 minutes, Krylon is dry to the touch. Rust-Oleum, well, um, gee. Oh, not good. Oh, oh boy. For a smooth, professional finish, fast-drying Krylon performs like no other. Krylon. No runs, no drips, no errors. Not too close. What do you think? I got that insurance? What insurance is that, Yogi? That's <laughs> what? The one you really need to have. If you don't have it, that's why you need it. Need what? Well, if you get hurt and miss work, it won't hurt to miss work. Uh -huh. And they give you cash, which is just as good as money. Half lack. Ask about it at work. <laughs> Shut the window. It is. Call 1-866-4-FELDCO for no-hassle replacement windows at a great price. Feldco has custom-made and installed over a half million replacement windows. Chicagoland trusts our quality. Drafty windows blowing you away? Hand me the phone. Call 1-866-4-FELDCO for a free estimate. Feldco replacement windows. Showrooms north and south. Stephen Wood owns a Hyundai Santa Fe. Compared to other SUVs in his class, I found that I got the most value for my money. It comes with the freedom of America's best warranty. It shows that Hyundai really stands behind the Santa Fe. Plus a long list of standard features, including six-speaker CD. It's a great SUV. My friends were jealous. The Hyundai Santa Fe at just $19,489. It's the thinking person's SUV. Freedom is calling, yeah. The Hyundai Santa Fe at $19,489. Your test drive is waiting. Our Pennzoil protection play of the ball game this afternoon. Fred McGriff slicing a ball to left center field. Hermanson makes a terrific play to rob Fred of a base hit. And that was leading off the second inning. And the Cubs only able to muster two hits in this ball game. One off the bat of Bobby Hill, the other one off the bat of Robert Machado. And Scott Chasen takes the mound in place of Mayhay. Mayhay going two innings, giving up those three runs on that inside the park home run from Brian Giles. Bruised hip, bruised left shoulder for Alou. His status day to day. Boy, it has been an injury plagued start to the campaign for Moise Salu. And it just seems like the Cubs are snake bit with their free agent signees, isn't it? Todd Huntley hasn't worked out to this point. Alu's been banged up. Fred McGriff, of course, they acquired in trade. He has not had a, a good year to this point. Makes it very, very frustrating, I know, for the fans. And as mad as you guys get, how do you think management and the players themselves feel when they're not able to perform up to expectations? Young, another rocket. This one into the left field corner. And Kevin Young, sporting a 187 batting average, has two extra base hits in the ball game. Well, one of the things that chasing a struggle with and granted he has not pitched that much for the Cubs but with that fastball it's tailing back out over the plate I'm really struggling getting in on right handed hitters now you start that fastball on the outer half and it tails back out over the plate right in the hitter zone
strike to Pokey Reese. Kind of alluded to it a couple of times, Dave, about this man and what he means to this Pirate Ball Club. Well, he has made their pitching staff a whole lot better with all that range at second base and a plus arm at the Keystone base as well. Remember, he was a Cincinnati Reds shortstop, but had Barry Larkin in his way. Had a shortstop's arm, had a shortstop's range. They put him at second base, and he became a gold glover for the Cincinnati Ball Club. Well, I think anytime you're going to build a ball club, you have to be strong up the middle defensively. Now, Jack Wilson, granted, he has seven errors, and the Pirates really hoping that he can hold his own offensively. Miller takes away the in-between hop. Good play. One out. Young holds it second. Nunez will bat for Anderson, who worked seven shutout innings. And always a tough thing over at third base is you don't have much time to get the good hop. And Bill Miller running in on that play to get that short hop and make the play. Despite four walks and two strikeouts, Anderson, two hits and seven scoreless innings. Abraham Nunez hitting 219, looks for his sixth RBI of the year and pumps across the strike. Ron Mayhay, by the way, for the Cubs, went two innings, gave up three earned runs, two hits, one walk, one strikeout, and one home run. Again, the Pirates, fewest home runs in baseball, and hit two of them today. Seems like with this guy, Nunez, faces a Cub, and he's raking. I mean, lifetime 236 hitter, but against his Cubs ball club, 360. Base hit up the middle. That's going to score Kevin Young, and the Pittsburgh Pirates have a new season high in runs. That's their 10th. Josh Fogg is saying, hey guys, save me a couple of these for game number two. There's that fastball again. It's tailing right out over the plate. Nunez is able to get on top, and that's the one thing that Pirates are working with him on keeping the ball on the ground. Oh, you always hate that as a pitcher. You know, when your team scores about, throws up a 10 spot. You're pitching either. You're the next guy. Next guy. Swung on and belted deep toward left by Hermanson. And that is long gone. Another Waveland wallop for the Pirates. Wow. That's their third home run in the ball game. you but I've had enough for game one 12 nothing Boy, just not able to get that fastball in you see Hermanson with that great extension once he gets the bat hat out and by him staying off the plate now there's another drive deep to left this one by Wilson Brown back into the well. Leaps up, mistimed his jump, and he can't find the ball. He'll put his arms up, and that will be a double by rule. Wilson will head back to second, and third base umpire Gary Cedarstrom will head out and make sure Brown did not mistakenly throw his hands up. And the Wrigley Field uh, ground rule, I beg your pardon, that's Benjamin, by the way, excuse me. The Wrigley Field ground rule, very simple here. If you go in after the baseball, the ball's alive. If you throw your hands up immediately and cannot find it, it's a rule book double. So Mike Benjamin, I beg your pardon, 
at second base with the fourth pirate hit and third extra base hit of this inning. Well, you want to, as an outfielder, find that wall. Has he timed his catch? You know what, Chip? That was my mistake. That is still Wilson out there. Wilson told second. You <laughs> Let's see the back of the shirt. Yeah, yeah it's Wilson. <laughs> my there bad, Chip. That's all right. Benjamin's on deck. So Wilson did have the double. It's been that kind of day for us, too. Here's Adrian Brown. He bats for the first time. When Adrian Brown last year with the shoulder injury did not play much for this Pirate Ball Club. Came into spring training with that center field job. Chad Hermanson on the DL. <laughs> That's what you're supposed Those to do if the ball sticks in the ivy. Rather than risking have it get poked behind one of those vines, let the umpire come out and get it. So Rosie Brown did the right thing. Remember last year, Julio Zuleta, Cubs were trying to find a place for him to play, stuck him out there in left field. And I mean, he ripped out about six square feet of vines. I mean, just leaves and vines and twigs were flying everywhere. He couldn't find the ball. In the meantime, one of the enemy base runners circled the bases. First walk for Chasen. Don Baylor doesn't want to go to that bullpen again unless he absolutely has to. Nope. First and second. Still only one out. And this is Mike Benjamin. Hitting 178. You can tell he's got the funky sideburns. Swinging butt. As good as a sacrifice, but it won't be credited with one. Runners move up 90 feet. And Makoviak bats with men at second, third, and two men out. have won three consecutive games here at Wrigley Field, believe it or not. And their starting pitching in the last five games has been outstanding. Just over two runs a game. And Anderson did nothing to spoil that run of success this afternoon. Well, that's the one thing that Chasen seen him hurt in this inning by his fastball. If he, he needs to change speeds, and there was that changeup. When Chasen got called up last year by the Cubs. Uh-oh, swung on, hit high in the air, deep to right. Sosa back in the well, leaps, and makes the catch. If McCoviak hit it four feet to Sosa's right, it would have been another home run. Instead, a great catch in right retires the side. Three more pirate runs come in in the eighth. Sosa played that one perfectly. Ten million, twelve million, just buy it. Take it to Oakland? Okay, last minute fare. That'll be thirteen hundred dollars one way. Larry? Yep, we're changing airlines. Even our last minute fares are affordable at Southwest Airlines. Introducing new non-stop service from Chicago Midway to LA, Seattle, San Diego, and the San Francisco Bay Area for just $1.99 each way. Every seat, every flight, every day. You are now free to move about the country. No waiting on our for those of you in pursuit of the gold standard, we suggest SUVs. From the family of dependable, long-lasting Chevy trucks. Now during truck time, visit your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer and get 2,000 cash back or 1.9 APR on Chevy Tahoe, Suburban, and Avalanche. That's 2,000 cash back or 1.9% APR. Only offers this good on Chevy trucks this durable. Get the gold bow tie. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Come to 
Six Flags Great America. So big, so close. Reinventing sports talk, as you know. Fox Sports Nets coverage of Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fare. Miller Lite, life is best told at a place called Miller Town. Hyundai, where driving is believing. Test drive one at your local Hyundai dealer today. And by AT&T Broadband. Beautiful day in Chicago. Weather starting to warm up, unfortunately. The Cubs bats are still ice cold and Pittsburgh to the bullpen for the first time today. As Sean Lowe is on to pitch Anki Ojeda on to pinch hit one pitch one out down 12 runs swinging at the first pitch not a real good idea one away. And Sean Lowe one of the three guys obtained from the Pirates in exchange for Todd Ritchie. This past offseason, Pirates also acquiring Josh Fogg, who we will see in the second game, along with Kip Wells. Look at this staff right now. Kip Wells responsible for six of the Pirates' wins, along with Josh Fogg, five wins. A quick strike to Corey Patterson, who is 0-4-3. Little ground ball right side. That'll be easy. Two up. Two men down. Yeah, what a great trade for Pittsburgh. I mean, and when you look at Fogg, Wells, and now Sean Lowe, they're responsible for three fifths of the Pirates' wins up to this point. And Todd Ritchie's three and five for the Sox. But again, the White Sox felt like they needed a top of the rotation starter, and Richie certainly fills that bill. The Pirates needed not only some good young pitching, but they needed depth, especially with all the injury problems that they've had. Chris Benson just now coming back. He's made two starts since returning from Tommy John surgery. So Dave Littlefield was very busy. And I think he made some great trades, trades that certainly have uh, given the Pirates a lot more hope than everyone thought they'd have at this point. If their offense swings the bats even halfway like they have today, they're going to be in, in pretty good shape. You know, going out and getting Pokey Reese, and they are still hamstrung with some salaries. Kevin Young's salary, Pat Mears' salary, who's probably not going to come back this year to play. Now he's had, what, two or three different opinions on that wrist problem that has plagued him? There's Lloyd McClendon, second year, and really last year you really couldn't evaluate him as a manager under losses last year and just bit by that disabled list all of last year. Pirates with a season high 12 runs. They have just blown the Cubs away today. They've hit three home runs. The Cubs have two hits. They've left five men on base. Jason Beret got shellacked. Ron Mayhe got shellacked. Scott Chasen got shellacked. And that man has not had a chance to do a whole lot of managing of late. Miller's aboard. And Sosa will try to spoil the shutout here in the eighth. Sosa, again, his last RBI, May 14th against the Cardinals. For every Cubs double this year, CarX makes a $50 donation to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. CarX, more than you thought for, less than you'd think. Sammy's fly to center. He's hitting to a double play, and he's lying to Aramis Ramirez at third. Game two will start roughly a half hour at the conclusion of this one. one to Sammy. Do you know what Lloyd McClendon's nickname is? Or was? I'm, not, I'm, I'm guessing it's not Lobo. <laughs> Strike two. 
Remember, he, he looks physically like a guy named Larvel Blanks, whose nickname was Sugar Bear. Remember Larvel okay. Blanks, sir? But to answer your question, no, I don't. Legendary Lloyd. Legendary Lloyd. He earned that nickname in the 1971 Little League oh, World that's Series. Right. That's right. Five for five with five dingers. And Sosa swings at a terrible pitch. He's got the weight of this team on his shoulders. And Sammy, just do what you do best. You can't do it all by yourself. Nothing happening in the Cubs eight. Your local Ford store is making this the spring sales event you're never going to forget. Get the best deal of the year on a new Ford Windstar. You get both 0% APR and 1,000 cash back. Plus, get a free family entertainment system worth over $900. 0% APR and 1,000 cash back. Combined with no payments for 90 days, and it's easy to see why Ford's got five of the 10 best-selling vehicles in America. Get to your local Ford store by May 31st. Thanks for the lift. You jumped out? I jumped I'm out of the moving truck. truck. You're kidding. At that point, it was like my decision was made. I'm oh. out of here. You know? Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. Thunder clatter, boom, boom, boom. CarX brakes for life. Never pay for brake pads or shoes again from just $69.95. CarX, more than you thought, for less than you'd think. Don't worry, call the CarX man. Introducing the best damn sports show, period. It's comedy, commentary, and all the scores and highlights you can possibly stand. It's not sex, but it's close. The best damn sports show, period. Tonight at 10. Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Honda of Lyle, the Honda Superstore, and the number one certified Honda dealer in Chicagoland. Our producer of Cubs baseball on Fox Sports Net is Bob Albrecht. Our director today is Dave Turner. Our associate producer is Joe Rabbit. Our stage manager, Christine Charbonneau. Our production manager, Moheen Ramsey. And the executive producer is Don Graham. Ninth inning rolls around it's 12 to nothing Pittsburgh has the big lead Mark Bellhorn shifts from shortstop to third base Augie Ojeda stays in the game at short Pat Mahomes the fourth pitcher of the ball game let's see if he can keep Pittsburgh off the scoreboard he would be the only cup pitcher if he does that to not allow a run today and a ball from Pat. One ball, no strikes to Kendall. Yeah, Mahomes making his fourth appearance. His contract was purchased from Iowa on May 13th and debuted the following day in St. Louis. Now, you can go... There's not one particular area that you can point your finger on at why the Cubs are going to be 14 games under 500, but I think the one area that has really hurt the Cubs is without the services of Kyle Farnsworth and Flash Gordon in that bullpen. Really, Don Baylor's had to mix and match a couple of, couple of guys that... Ground ball to second. Not to be disagreeable, I understand your point. Early in the year when the Cubs were playing a lot of one and two run ball games, yes, I would agree with that. But right now, when you're starting pitching, especially your four and five men in Beret and Cruz, who are going to be one and 14 before we play the second game of this doubleheader, when they go five innings, that bullpen does tend to get a little bit exposed. So in that regard, I agree with you. But there really haven't been, frankly, that many games where the Cubs bullpen has been asked to come in and protect the lead lane. They just, it's been a, and it's not that the Cubs have gotten blown out. But they, they're losing 4 nothing, 5 nothing, 6-1, 4-2, 4-1. I mean, it's, there has not been one single week's worth of play offensively for this team that has allowed Don to do a whole lot of managing where he's had to manage that bullpen. It's funny, that ball game in, on Sunday, and you made the point. I mean, that, that was a game that Don Baylor did have a chance to manage. <laughs> Rocket shot by Young. Boy, he is having a great game. He'll be three for five. And Young with three extra base hits. 
He had 10 extra base hits coming into the game. I mean, what, fans are, are watching the game or sitting in the stands are going to say, well, this game is Baylor's fault. Well, what could Don Baylor have done differently in this game from a managerial standpoint? Now, you can talk all you want about maybe a different lineup or different players. None of that holds true. The players didn't perform well today. No, not in one... When you look at one particular game, I, I, I think the definition of a of a great manager is, and certainly Don Baylor last year, you know, getting the most out of your players, putting players in the right spots to succeed. But as you mentioned, there has not been that many tight situations where you can play those matchups, where you can outmanage the other ball club. And it's been a story, too, as low as the batter for Pittsburgh, by the way, that Don has not stuck with, and some say this is to his detriment, has not stuck with a set lineup. Well, that's been out of necessity. I mean, it's, it's a very frustrating thing you can't as a player you would agree Dave you, you can't get in the groove if you don't get consistent at bats but from a manager's standpoint if a guy isn't doing anything with the at bats you're giving him you have to give someone else a chance and Don has used over 30 different lineups this year already some of that yes has to do with injury some of that has to do with circumstance meaning who you face but a great deal of it also has to do in fairness to the manager Complete and total ineffectiveness by guys that were expected by that man to hit and have it. You know, and you can juggle the lineup. You can move guys, you know, for a while. Sammy Sosa batting fourth. Moises Lou moving to a different spot. But again, it, it, it's all, you can move them. But at the same time, you know, and in defense of, of Baylor, you know, just write out that lineup and, and, and play. I mean, uh, talking with Tony La Russa last week in the late 80s with that Oakland A's lineup, it was pretty much, hey, just write out that lineup and close your eyes and have at it. Let them play. I think Don's doing that. I think you'll see more of that. And once Gonzalez is back by the weekend in uh, Houston, and when Todd Hundley comes back and when that will be, we're not sure yet. He's beginning a, a medical rehabilitation assignment soon he's down at extended spring training getting some at bats and there's a bullet towards short and so once those two men get back at least Don will be able to put his lineup together which has not been the case Mahomes doesn't give anything up in the ninth inning that's good news and the Cubs come to the plate in the ninth time to play ball it's the Krylon fastball to the series sweepstakes what a game this is Visit the Krylon Fastball to the Series displays at participating retailers or Krylon.com for an entry form and your shot at a trip to the 2002 Series this October. And it is gone! It's your chance to be in the middle of the action, so don't miss out. Fastball to the Series, brought to you by Fox Sports Net and Krylon. No runs, no drips, no errors. Hey everyone, Mitch Robinson at the Empress Casino in Juliet reminding you that time is running out on the Cold Cash Cool Cars giveaway. We've already given away the cold cash, but there's still time to enter for the cool cars. Someone's going to win this Cadillac Escalade or his and hers Mustang convertibles. The lucky winners will be drawn this Friday night at 7 right here at the Empress Casino. You must be present to win. So come on out to Empress Casino Juliet for the Cold Cash Cool Cars giveaway before it's too late. With immediate claim service, GEICO gets you back on the road fast. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Here's our Mercedes moment. A huge day for Pirate slugging first baseman Kevin Young. Three extra base hits, Dave Otto, including a mammoth home run leading off the fourth inning. Well, just a fastball. I'm sorry, breaking ball out over the plate, and KY got all of it. So Fred McGriff leads things off 
Rosie Brown and then Robert Machado are scheduled for the Cubs. Again, game two will follow. A little past the 7 o'clock hour. Juan Cruz will look for his first win of the 2002 season. He'll be opposed by Josh Fogg, who's been the de facto ace of the Pirates. He's 5-1. and one. There's a fly ball to left and deep and gone. Fred McGriff homers for the second consecutive game. That's the 12th run the Cubs have scored in seven games. Well, that puts the Cubs, Chip. No, obviously, <laughs> one run, they have a big hill to climb. But to me, I like to see that from Fred McGriff driving that ball the other way for his fifth home run of the year and 25 RBIs. And, you know, that's something that's often overlooked. 25 RBIs at this point in the season. He's on a pace of 100 RBIs. So on a positive side, Fred McGriff, second home run. Two home runs in a row. That's ground ball right side. Young two is right. But you're right. Despite a low batting average, still has been able to drive in runs the most consistently for an inconsistent offense with two outs. He's knocked in 25 now. That's one more than Sosa. Despite hitting... 11 fewer home runs. Here's Machado. Robert one for three in the ball game. That home run by McGriff gives the Cubs in their last seven games 12 runs and 38 hits. And the crime dog also benefiting from hitting behind Sosa. You look at Sosa's numbers coming into this ball game a 450 on base percentage. So most of the time, bulk of the time, has been driving in Mr. Sosa. like to see that from him driving the ball the other way you know the home run the other day to right field getting on top and pulling it but get those long arms extended just drive it to left popped up out of the play by Machado no balls two strikes of the baseball action underway already New York is in Philadelphia that game scoreless after two Florida's in Cincinnati, the first place Reds, nothing, nothing in the second. Later on, Houston will be in St. Louis. Dodgers visit Milwaukee, San Diego at Colorado in National League play. White Sox got three in Boston, three nothing after one at historic Fenway Park. Boston, or excuse me, Cleveland and Detroit scoreless after two. And the Yankees are just roasting hot. They're winning again at home against Toronto. Two to nothing, the, five, the uh, second inning score there. Comes down to their final out as Machado strikes out. It's Bobby Hill who's been on base twice in the ballgame. Second strikeout for Lowe, who will not be credited with a save. The lead was too great. And he did not work the requisite number of innings, which would be three to qualify. Side to Bobby Hill. Pirates got three in the first, two in the third, one in the fourth, three in the seventh, three in the eighth. Hill a high fly to deep center. Adrian Brown camps out, and the Pirates shellack the Cubs in game one. 12 to 1 the final score. The Cubs have dropped 10 of their last 11 games. And again, they fall to 14 and 28 on the year, 7 and 17 in the Central. And the dismal offense continues. Just 12 runs, 38 hits in the last seven Cub games played. Pirates win this one very easily. And Jimmy Anderson, Dave Otto, with another great performance, is our Hyundai player of the game. Well, once Jimmy Anderson got that lead early, he was able to find a rhythm. Out on the mound as he goes seven innings, only two hits, two strikeouts, and four walks. But again, anytime your offense falls behind as big as the Cubs did in tonight's ball game, very difficult to come from behind. We've seen that all year, but you give up this many runs, I don't care who you're playing, tough to overcome that. So the Pirates beat the Cubs 12 to 1. The final score. Game 
game one mercifully is in the books. We'll hope for better times in game two, which will follow shortly. We'll take a break, come back with more from Wrigley Field in a moment. service geico gets you back on the road fast geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance nothing beats the fun and excitement of watching the cubs in beautiful wrigley field and you can be there that's right tickets are still available for upcoming cubs games to get your tickets just call tickets.com at 1-800-THE-CUBS head to the wrigley field box office punch in www.cubs.com or visit any Chicagoland Sears or Sears hardware store. Don't wait, catch all the Cubs action firsthand and get to the game. Blind guy? Well, what are you going to do to an uncle there? I think I may kick some puppies. How's oh, that? <laughs> Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. Did you steal that guy's dog, too? Is that whose dog that is? <laughs> if you live in the suburbs and want low city pricing, but you're afraid of high city taxes, Jacobs Twin Auto Plaza has a message for you. Your sales tax is based on where you live, not where you buy. And you won't find a selection like this anywhere else in Chicago. So if you live in the western suburbs, you're just minutes away from volume savings at Jacobs Twin Auto Plaza. You always win at Jacobs Twin. Just five blocks east of Harlem on Grand Avenue. Ration. Down. Get smart. Get supplied. Military and Police Supply has aisles and aisles of military merchandise and other fun things. We've got the good stuff and the rough stuff. Manuals for your mind, stickers for your bumper, bulldogs and cycles. We've got watches and rings, caps, hats, and helmets. Hey, that looks good. Don't get many complaints. Located at 7351 West Madison in Forest Park. Minutes from the Eisenhower from the city or suburbs. South B12, surplus for weekly specials and closeouts. Supply and security for over 25 great years. Military and Police Supply. Thanks for the business. From our Fox Sports Studios, you're dialed in, and we're breaking it down, play by play, Fox style. So turn it up. This is the Fifth Third Bank Chicago Cubs host. play of the game, first inning. And there's a Runners in first ball. and second, and Bobby Hill will slow and turn to the two, double play. Three. Runners on no, first and third save. by, and that, in essence, led to three runs in the first inning. You know, I really so thought it was, because Giles Jason got himself in a little bit of trouble there, and I thought these guys were a little lackadaisical on turning that, and you got to give Brian Giles credit. He busted his tail, kept that inning alive. They get, at, they get that double play right there. It's a whole different ball game for Jason. Hi, everybody. I'm Eric Goodman. Mike Bilecki along the way and by. We've been saying it all season. The piece is just not there for the Cubs today. Starting pitching wasn't there. Bullpen wasn't there. Hitting wasn't there. Defense wasn't there. And then, to add to it, Moise Lugo's goes out with an injury. Well, I mean, hopefully, he, he, right now he's probably a little sore, but when he wakes up tomorrow, um, we saw the highlights. He went into that uh, concrete wall and that metal sheeting down there, and he went in hard. you got to give him credit. Um, you know, these guys were losing by nine or ten runs. And to bust his tail to try to make that play, you got to tip your cap to him. I would agree with that. Time now to go out to the ballpark to bring in Chip and Dave. And guys, a lot of discouraging things about today's ball game. But the thing that really concerned me more than anything is, and we talked about it during the pregame show, Pirates came in as the worst hitting team in baseball, and they put up a 12 spot today. Well, the best thing about game one, guys, that you can say is that mercifully it's over. And really, the one thing that isn't over is this Cubs' long, long offensive drought. The last seven games are averaging about a run and a half a ball game, and they're averaging a little more than five hits a game. In this day and age of explosive offense, Dave Otto, with the ballparks the size that they are, with the hitters as big and as strong as they are, 
one and a half runs and five plus hits a game isn't going to win you many and the Cubs have now lost 10 of their last 11. When, when you dig yourself this big of a hole obviously it's very difficult to come back but, but the quality teams every once in a while in a ball game like this will step up the offense to score some runs. St. Louis did it a couple week, a couple days ago where they scored a bunch. They were down 8 nothing. I'm not saying that the Cubs had to do that in today's ball game. Very difficult. Jimmy Anderson threw the ball well, but at the same time, the offense is struggling, and the starting pitching right now is digging themselves a big hole and difficult to score any runs when you have a guy like Jimmy Anderson on the mound, stake to a six-run lead. He's in his rhythm. Yeah, so maybe you guys were right. Maybe that first inning turns things around, but the fact of the matter is the Pirates it scored nine more times after the first inning and that's far too many for the Cubs offense to come back from it.